Hi and welcome to this short video about the engine failure after V1. The purpose of this video is to recall the correct technique to manage an engine failure at or after V1. And with the help of this maneuver, to improve your trainee's competence in managing the aeroplane's flight path through manual control. To ensure that the trainees manage the flight path safely and achieve optimum operational performance of the Airbus aircraft, they should be familiar with the flight control characteristic of the Airbus aircraft. Airbus experimental flight test pilot Sean Wildey will explain to you the flight control characteristic of the normal law in case of an engine failure. Thereafter, we will recall the correct technique to manage an engine failure after V1. Sean? To study the flight control characteristics, we'll have a look at an Airbus aircraft in flight. The aircraft has just taken off, all engines are running, and the autopilot is not yet engaged. Now we retard one thrust lever to idle. In normal law, with this asymmetric situation and no roll commanded by the pilot, the aircraft will stabilize by deflecting some spoiler and aileron on the opposite wing of the failed engine. In addition, the yaw damper will command some rudder surface deflection to reduce the side slip. As we can see, the aircraft does not continue to roll, but stabilizes with a small but steady bank angle and side slip with a slowly diverging heading. So the aircraft actually helps the flight crew manage the initial flight path safely. The only action for the pilot is to adjust the pitch to prevent the loss of speed. Lateral inputs on the side stick should only be made to control the desired heading. The side slip target changes from yellow to blue when an engine failure is detected during takeoff or go round. When the side slip index is blue, it's referred to as the beta target. To optimize the climb performance, we now center the beta target. It's important that the pilot understands the difference between the ball of a turn and slip indicator and the beta target. Centering the ball of a turn and slip indicator will minimize the side slip. Centering the beta target, however, will minimize the total aircraft drag. It achieves the best compromise between the drag produced by the flight control surface deflection and the drag produced by the side slip of the airframe. Therefore, a centered beta target will help the flight crew to achieve the best overall optimum aircraft climb performance. Now, keeping in mind the flight control characteristic of the normal law in case of an engine failure, Let's take a closer look at the Airbus recommended technique in case of an engine failure at or after V1. First, let me recall that if an engine failure occurs at or above V1, and this is valid for all the other malfunctions as well, the takeoff must be continued. In the case of an engine thrust loss, while the aircraft is still on the ground, the pilot flying will continue to look outside and intuitively apply a rudder pedal input to stay on the runway center line. The pilot flying should keep this input during rotation. If the trainee encounters difficulty to find the appropriate input on the rudder pedal when still on the ground, you may consider increasing the range between V1 and VR. This will give the trainee more time to accommodate. Additionally, check the correct seating position and rudder pedal adjustment. For additional information, you can refer to the wind video What about pilot seating position? The rotation rate is identical to the one with all engine operative. The pilot flying should target a rotation rate of 3 degrees per second. The trainee should rotate the aircraft towards a target pitch attitude of 12.5 degrees for A320, 
330 and A340 aircraft and 10 degrees for A350 and A380 aircraft. The pilot flying should then follow SRS. The trainee should be aware that the SRS may command a lower pitch attitude than the initial target to prevent a loss of speed. This will depend on the aircraft's weight and the external conditions like the pressure altitude and wind. With an engine failed, the speed target will be between V2 and V2 plus 15, depending on the speed at the moment of the engine failure. As demonstrated by Sean, the Airbus aircraft flies safely, even without any action by the pilot. To optimize the climb performance, the pilot flying should center the beta target. The trainee should make a smooth and accurate input on the rudder pedal on the side to which the beta target is deflected. While maintaining the beta target centered, the pilot flying should use the rudder trim to gradually reduce the input on the rudder pedals before engaging the autopilot. The trainees should understand that the manual rudder trim is inhibited when the autopilot is engaged. When the aircraft is correctly trimmed, the trainees should use the autopilot in order to reduce their workload. Various cases have indicated that when startled, the pilot may inadvertently keep or apply a rudder pedal input after autopilot engagement. This may result in unwanted deflections of the flight control surfaces, an increase in aerodynamic drag and therefore a reduced climb performance. Additionally, a deflection of the rudder pedal may cause an autopilot disengagement. If a flex takeoff is performed, the use of toga thrusts can be considered by the flight crew to increase the climb performance and therefore the obstacle clearance. If the climb performance is less than expected, the flight crew should confirm that the landing gear lever is in the up position. A system malfunction, like an engine thrust loss during a dynamic maneuver, particularly if it is not expected, can easily distract the pilots from maintaining the intended flight path and may result in a loss of situational awareness in relation to the state of the aircraft and its systems. It is a usual error for the pilot monitoring to be distracted by a master caution shortly after liftoff and inadvertently omit the call-out positive climb. The usual result is that the landing gear remains extended. To mitigate this possible pilot error, the A350 and A380 engine fail ECAM procedure reminds the flight crew to select the landing gear lever up if it is still down during takeoff or initial climb. Future standard of the flight warning computer for A320, A330 and A340 will also include this ECAM action line. The pilot flying should initiate the ECAM actions only when a safe flight path is established and the aircraft is above 400 feet AGL. In the engine fail ECAM procedure, the first actions are to secure the fail engine. If the engine flame out and no damage is expected, example due to fuel starvation, the engine can be considered as secured when the thrust lever is set to idle and the engine master switch is off. The engine should be considered as damaged if the failure of the engine was accompanied by, for example, a loud noise, significant increase in aircraft vibrations, repeated or uncontrolled engine stalls or associated abnormal engine indications. 
In order to effectively secure the engine and prevent further damage, the respective five push button must be pushed and one agent be discharged. As soon as the failed engine is secured and the aircraft reaches the engine out acceleration altitude, a level off should be performed to accelerate and retract the slats and flaps on schedule. To level off the aircraft, the pilot flying should push the vertical speed or altitude knob. The speed target changes to 250 knots. Remember that the acceleration has to be initiated at or below the maximum engine out acceleration altitude even if only flex thrust has been used. The trainees must respect this to avoid exceeding the certified time limit with the remaining engine operating at takeoff thrust. During this acceleration phase, the trainees should stop the ECAM actions. This will minimize distractions and help both pilots to effectively monitor and cross-check the configuration changes. The trainees should be aware that during this acceleration phase, the auto thrust and therefore the speed mode protection are not yet engaged. When the speed trend on the PFD reaches green dot speed, the pilot flying resumes the climb by pulling the altitude knob on the FCU. The speed target becomes green dot. When the lever MCT message flashes on the FMA, the pilot flying should set the thrust lever to the MCT detent in order to set the maximum continuous thrust on the remaining engine and activate the auto thrust. If the thrust lever of the remaining engine is already in the flex MCT notch, the pilot flying should move the thrust lever out of the flex into the climb notch and then back to the MCT. With the aircraft now in clean configuration, following the intended flight pass and using the automation systems, the trainees should continue to perform the remaining ECAM actions. If no engine damage is suspected, before reading the ECAM status page, the trainees should consider to relight the failed engine with the help of the engine relighting flight procedure. As a conclusion, I would like to recall that it is essential for the trainees to understand that their initial and primary task is to manage the flight path safely. They must not get distracted from flying the aircraft. Only smooth and deliberate actions on the rudder pedals are required to manage the situation. The aircraft is stable in itself thanks to its normal flight control law. I hope you liked this briefing and I will see you around for the next one.